Hey, what's going on everybody? Rob Marzullo here, Ram Studio Comics. And today's video is going to show you the process in which I take a very rough sketch uh, that I created in Sketchbook Pro and digitally paint over top inside of Photoshop and try to make this into a fully rendered digital painting complete with color and everything at the end. This will actually be a two-part video. So this is the first part where I, again, I take that rough sketch and I just start painting over top. One thing I want to stress is something I'm starting to realize more and more as I progress through this journey of art is to really utilize the rough sketch as a template and uh, a basis for composition and, and placement of things but not not overly refining the line art you know all the time especially for a painting in which case you're gonna you know paint over the line work anyways you know if this was gonna be a little bit more comic book oriented then I would you know clean up the line work dramatically more but one of the things that allowed me to do by keeping the rough sketch uh, you know rough is to think more about the elements in the scene placement composition you know things like that I wasn't so worried about you know I gotta make this line perfect and this needs to start here and here I just kept it very loose and sketchy so now in the painting process I grab elements and separate them uh, some people like to paint on one layer you know when I do stuff like this especially when there's a lot of uh, objects in the scene I like to separate a few of them so I separated the monitors uh, up top and I believe I end up separating the tables yep I'm doing that here um, I also use a uh, quick mask I'll hit Q and you'll see it kind of pink out the screen or like it's a magenta color uh, what that is then you can draw back and forth with black and white and whatever brush you want to use soft brush hard brush whatever and you can control your selection a little bit better inside of Photoshop so I think that's a pretty cool feature you know you see I'm using it right there um, you know if you're like me you don't like clicking around objects very much you know it gets something about the you know clicking around them gets like painstaking where I like to draw around the object so see I'm just smudging it around I'm only using the chalk brush nothing too spectacular here I pretty much go to the chalk brush for 90 percent of what I do inside of Photoshop uh, either that or just the hard round brush you know, I've got all these specialty brushes but I hardly ever use them so I paint in a little bit of dark a little bit of light and I go back and forth I'm never real sure about what direction I'm taking with this I just kind of fumble my way through it and feel out the process uh, but the only thing I can recommend if you're doing something like this, something I probably should have did a little bit more of to make this a bit easier on myself, is get more reference materials, more samples of each material. I mean, obviously, you know, you just got different shades of gray to make this painting come to life, you know, life if you're doing it this type of way where you paint all the gray tones and then add the color at the end. But there's so many different subtleties of tone there gray and the way the highlights work off different objects so one of the things that you can do to assist you in making this kind of painting is you know get a sample of you know what jeans look like in the dark or whatever even take your own photos what a background of a bedroom looks like in the dark with all the different elements somebody standing in a doorway you know you can look up all these things google them or do whatever you got to do or take your own pictures but it's amazing how when you have reference to that you know it speeds you up for one and your accurate your accuracy and the level of your painting goes way up because uh, and I'm not saying you have to copy any of that just use it as a visual reference pin it to the wall but now when you go to paint the highlights and the shadows you're gonna look at that you know um, that sample pick and you're gonna have some reference there and it's gonna show in your work so I didn't do enough of that here unfortunately I should have but you know I just kind of wing it you know fly by the seat of my pants kind of guy so and you know I made up a lot of stuff here you know like crunchies I don't think that's really a brand or anything but it would probably be delicious if it was and that mouse seems to think so because he's over there chewing on a piece of it but yeah this is just kind of my comedic interpretation of video games you know it's kind of me with video games actually because when I used to play them or you know I I'd play once in a while but not very often I would get obsessed you know so I actually have to pra uh, practice abstinence when it comes to video games or my uh, you know my life would go upside down and I would you guys wouldn't hear from me any, anymore you wouldn't see any of my drawings so for me drawings are actually my video game so there it is 
Um, so I thought this would be a fun piece and, you know, it gives me something to paint, kind of, you know, practice and get some more uh, portfolio pieces out there and show you guys the process in which I do this. So, you know, I just kind of keep building upon it. You see, I keep adding, you know, a little bit more shadow, adding some highlights. Again, that's a, that's a separate layer right there so I can paint freely. You know, I select the... Uh, lock transparent pixels and I can paint that just like it's you know totally masked off you know it's reminds me of masking things off uh, back in the day when I would airbrush so it's kind of the same concept and I want to say most all softwares I have it now not just Photoshop but Photoshop's one of my favorites and you know I got the big gulp sitting on top of a comic book I thought that was kind of funny because you know video games a lot of people say video games are taking over comics or have taken over comics which I don't entirely agree with that. Like, I think all good ideas start with a comic book or a drawing, so and they eventually become a video game or whatever. So, so you see, I just keep selecting little elements. Now, the good thing about separating the scene too is, like you see, I just selected that wall. I don't have to worry about painting on the screens because they're a separate layer. So you can actually, you don't have to separate every element, but separating key elements will make it easier to paint through it. Uh, so now I drop out the background and I just shade this in a little bit more. Uh, keep trying to fill out the forms because I'm not, uh, again, not entirely sure as to where all this should look. I'm just kind of uh, pinballing around until I see something that looks right. And it's funny how you can get so many different tones in a grayscale uh, painting like this. Um, you know, and kind of bring it to life. You know, there's just a lot of little nuances to pick out and stuff like this to get it right. And then by dropping out the background and putting it back in, sometimes you'll see flaws there. Now, one thing I probably should have did here, and I, I didn't do it in this particular shot, is flip the scene back and forth. Um, I've been doing that more and more in my digital paintings, but here I didn't. Um, probably should have, but... You know, I think it's because it was a straight on shot. I didn't feel the need to. Like, I wasn't going to really pick apart so many differences from one side to the next on a straight on shot. But if you have any funky angles in your scenes, it's a really good idea to keep flipping the canvas. You'll, you'll definitely find flaws in your work that way. Now, the next one will be, you know, where I finish shading this out a little bit more. Um, I'd say this is probably about 80% done, somewhere in there. Um, and then I'll add the color layers over top and that'll kind of, uh, you know, bring it to the end. So be sure to check out part two and thanks for watching.